Hey everybody and look <laughs> Hey everybody and welcome back to Super Fighting Robots. We are playing Virtual On Mars. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, this uh, Virtual On is a arcade fighting game by Sega. It started about around Saturn era, something around there. Um, in the arcade it has it's operate you operate a giant robot by using two joysticks um, so naturally it gets strange translations to consoles um, but this one here is also this console version here in addition to having the regular arena style fighting it has a full-on story yep <laughs> with narration um, some narrative about take control of Mars or something uh, I, I just saved some general and I'm getting launched out into space I guess back to Mars and I have no idea what we're gonna do uh, there was some kind of briefing before that but yeah uh, I guess uh, we need to take down whatever enemies are in this area and go on um, this game is pretty weird just cuz it's got a lot of um, a lot of things that would that feel contrived I guess uh, there's a there's a lot of uh, not that they're like contrived as like systems or anything but they feel contrived as far as um, within fighting games or the mech genre or whatever they're they're just kind of strange uh, like um, you'll see for instance a lot of there, there's no lock on um, a lot of the game is getting a bead on your enemy and so you'll see you'll see me or sometimes enemies rapidly jump up and down that is because that is because we are trying to recenter the camera on the enemy, which also leaves you vulnerable. Um, and I said there's no lock on, but that's actually not, that's not that's not true exactly. Um, there is a lock on because there's not exactly a total ma there's a cursor, but there's not really a manual aim. Um, shots do track enemies to a degree so your oops, your shots will uh, uh, your shots will take on different properties depending on what dash you do so if you're retreating and you do a dash it'll be a little bit weaker if you if you go for the the most powerful move just like that that will do massive amounts of damage and also leave you in a very vulnerable position. Um, same thing with melee attacks, I just missed that. Um, I guess it didn't matter, but I just missed that. You saw me miss that attack because he was in a period of invulnerability. Um, if he wasn't destroyed by my partner, I would have been in big trouble. So yeah, so there's some kind of rebellion going on and they're going to send me to fight DNA, which I guess is the name of the enemy. Um, I'm honest, I'm not going to pay attention to the story in this game. <laughs> it's not exactly compelling. Um, but it is an interesting place to... This uh, this is an interesting place to... If you've never played a virtual on game, I guess to start, because it is a little bit more simple. Uh, the full-on virtual on one-on-one -on -one fighting games have a lot of modifiers. They have two turbo buttons. Uh, the dash is over here. The turbos you can see. You can cancel in and out of it by tapping it. Um, the different turbos will modify different things. There's only a single turbo in here, so there's not the kind of uh, different. There's less properties that you can put onto things. Um, but the 
but they change. Um, they they did that in this game particularly because there is it's more of a two on two fighting system. So they simplified the basic controls a little bit. There's even a kind of auto mode, which I don't actually recommend you use because it'll take out a lot of the control and the. Uh, it it won't teach you how to play. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, but there's there's a uh, three atta three basic attacks that you need to know. Um, there's this the right trigger. Which will shoot your regularly general long range main weapon. Uh, there's the left trigger, which will throw out like that bomb over there. That's my sub weapon. Um, and if you press both of them at once, let me try to get a lock on this person. Ah, you'll shoot out that sword beam. That's your middle weapon, and that generally will do a decent amount of damage or have some specific properties that you want to use. Um, you can jump up in the air. Jumping, jumping up in the air makes you vulnerable, but gets you the lock on. You can also dash to the side and fire off your primary weapon. That'll also kind of arc your shots towards them while recentering your targeting on them again. Um, but again, doing all each, doing basically any move is going to put you into a period where you will be vulnerable so you kinda wanna limit your moves um, it's less punishing in this game just because the enemies are less threatening uh, if you really, if anybody's played virtual on, on the Dreamcast that game is brutal even on the easiest difficulty modes you'll probably get destroyed oh wonderful three, three at the same time um, That looks intimidating, but <laughs> Deborah Bite. That's a. These are terrible names. Um, the game. The game is pretty intimidating, but this simplifies it a little bit. It eases you into it with the story mode, which is mostly. This guy has like. This robot has a cap on it. He's like wearing a trilby. Not these, but uh, your partner. Your partner's robot is like wearing a trilby. Also, there's discs in the back of these robots. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, but yeah, the designs are really cool. I really like the very flat, shaded, polygonal environments, like really geometric environments. Uh, and it does actually. It, it feels good when you understand why they did it, but it's a very, especially if you are, if you're used to other action games, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a good one to start with. Um, it's not a good robot game to start with if you're used to other action games. Probably something like Armored Core or something is a little bit better than for that. Uh, this is very multiplayer focused. Uh, but it's also like the genre progenitor of like if you know anything about oh I'm about to die if you know anything about like Rise of the Incarnates or the Gundam Versus series uh, uh, what the hell what just happened Sergeant Hatter that's cool that was really dramatic I skipped that cutscene um, the Virtron Cinco No Rond um, what else Acceleration of Suguri? That kind of... Those games. Those games are all... Oh shit, this is pretty hard, pretty hard. Those games are all kind of like children of Virtuan. So, it's worth playing just kind of for that. Uh, the robots... It feels... The robots feel huge. They're heavy. They are unwieldy. And I imagine they would feel a lot better with twin sticks, but that makes the game kind of impossible for me to play, so I'm not going to bother with that. Um, and there is a lot to learn. Obviously, since I just got decimated by these sisters. Uh, well, we'll try that again. Hopefully I don't need to see that cutscene all over again. Um, 
but yeah, it's it's a decent one to ease yourself in. Or you could just go up if you have a Dreamcast. It's probably easier just to pick up the one over there. Um, like I said, that game has a really hard, really steep learning curve. But there's also twin sticks that you can you can buy for a lot of these games. I think you were supposed to lose to that one. That's weird. There, there are twin stick setups that you can buy for a lot of these games. They'll probably make it feel better, but like... Like, there's... Oh, there's also, um... Yeah, but they're very specialized. You're never going to use them for any other game. I'm not even sure if they're compatible with any other game. So, I mean, that's what you're getting into. If you, I mean, if you really love robots... And... You know, if you're that person who bought that Steel Battalion controller, I'm sure that won't bother you bother you any. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is an investment. It is a lot to learn to play. Probably, I mean, if you're really gonna get into it, it's probably honestly just best to buy. I don't know if anybody still plays the Xbox 360 version, but they made an uh, enhanced port of. Virtron, Virtron, Oratorio Tangram, which I think is the second game, and that's kind of like the definitive Virtron as far as arena fighting versions. That's there's one of those on the 360, looks pretty nice. Um, they did make twin stick controllers for it, though I don't know how many people use that. Uh, it's just it's not a pick up and play game at all. So, if you wanted to do that, you're not going to be able to. It's one of the more steep... One of the games, one of the robot games with like one of the steeper, steeper learning curves. Um, I'm not playing well at all. I'm doing terrible. I do not know how to play this game. I, I know the basics, and <laughs> that's really not enough to, to know any... There's, just, there's a lot of things that go into the canceling and you know getting people up against the wall and using the environment and stuff that you can probably find if you just like look up some tutorials that'll teach you yeah you see there they're lock you can tell they're locking on because they are using jumping up and down wildly which looks ridiculous but it, it feel it feels good to play when you understand i guess is the important part and you know just historically it's useful to Place those other games. Place those other games. Um, history in the game. Uh, you can also get this game. Uh, this game is actually on PS2, and they actually did get a US release on this one. The game, the Two on Two Fighter before this, Virtual on Force, that got a 360 port, but only in Japan. So I think that's also region locked. So unless you have a Japanese Xbox, um, you know, that's not an option. <laughs> but essentially, it's it's pretty close to this one. Uh, without the story mode, I believe. But yeah, I'll just play this for a little bit more, and you can kind of see what's going on. You know, I'm jumping a lot, but I'm not. I don't actually think you're supposed to be. I'm sure anybody who actually knows how to play this game is looking at me and just being very upset that I am jumping in the air and sticking my face, not locking on properly, sticking my face where I can be easily punched. That kind of thing. And you know, there's a lot of there's actually a lot of different robot types. You can see my partner over there. It's just a big, giant, heavy mech. He's got some heavy firepower. I'm going to use a pair disc real quick. It, yeah, there's a lot of control. There's, this, these games are, are really about the space and controlling the space. Um, I guess we need to proceed to the next area. Controlling the space. There's a lot of angling and getting on the right end and trying to cancel before you make yourself vulnerable, that kind of thing. What's going on here? Nothing? Okay. 
so we need to get to the next area. Um, that kind of thing. It's very much about placing yourself. And keeping track of your enemies. And knowing kind of what your enemies can do and how their abilities kind of set up the space that you're playing in. Those kind of things. Um, there's a really a lot of interesting theory and stuff that can go into it, but it's not it's not popular at all in the U.S. I've never seen the virtual on machine um, ever, and I don't think I don't think you'll find one in the U.S. Um, especially since there are basically no arcades left here, uh, which is a shame because this is probably something uh, whose appeal is going to be a lot more obvious an arcade, I mean you walk up to a big giant machine that has two sticks on it and tells you you can control a giant robot and it'll start making a lot more sense. Um, and you can kind of see the turning is a lot faster when you're not moving. This is as fast as I can turn and you can't turn the sensitivity up or anything like that to compensate for it. That's just the way it is. Um, what I was talking about weight of the machines earlier, that's partially what I meant, that they just feel heavy. Just the simple act of turning them around is difficult. Which is, well, I mean, it's kind of weird with, since you got to jump to retarget. Um, so that kind of contradicts it. I really should use my sub weapons more. So yeah, you see, you can see, like, the sub weapons make certain areas unsafe. And you can kind of finesse it to um, give it a little bit of the side or lead a little bit but you can't there's not really you know that's not really an option you want to be able to, when you shoot at them like the bullets will curve as long as you're within lock on oh, that's not good Yeah, and you see there's that explosion size there, much larger than, I guess it's not that much larger. But you can definitely see if I do, oh, well, no. But yeah, if you check this out, well, that's not helpful. Those, yeah, so those, that's my backwards shot. If I move forwards, you'll see a much bigger one. If I move an angle, you can kind of get that curved shot over there. But, you know, you also... Um, also telegraph your moves a lot in this game. Uh, I won't play probably for much more after this. That'll be about it, since this video is getting a bit long. But, you know, that's virtual on. It's, uh... It's a really strange game. Um, which you kind of have to meet on its terms as far as even just basic controls and systems uh, there's not a there's, but what I can say is there's not a lot like it even with all those games I listed like the Gundam Versus and stuff and things like that they have a, this game still has a very distinct feel it's a lot different than those and just it most it's the feel has um, pretty much just stayed the same. Like this feels a lot similar to the Dreamcast one, the Xbox 360 one, even if it's not quite as complex as far as just controls wise. Um, there's there's a lot more to keep track of for sure. Um, but it's yeah it's there's not really. There's no mech games like it. It's not a mech warrior where you're basically a tank, like a panzer tank that you've got to control that has legs. And it's not a Zone of the Enders or some of those middle uh, armored cores where you can kind of just uh, skate across everything. It's very deliberate, it's very, uh, every, everything's very deliberate, everything is very, almost, like, reasoned? No. 
everything that you you have to pick your shots carefully. Um, everything is very deliberate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh that's virtual. One. It's a really strange, arena you know, robot fighting game. But it's a it's a pretty cool one. If you can get, I don't know if you can get some of your friends to stick around long enough to learn it. It could potentially get some real good competition going, but, you know, you're going to have to teach them a really obtuse Sega fighting game. So, good luck with that. Alright, that's it for this episode.